All right, welcome to another Aquarium at Home live stream. For today, we are taking things in a little bit of a different uh, direction. We are gonna do, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about what we feed the animals. That happens to be one of the greatest expenses at the aquarium, and it's something that obviously is pretty crucial to their well being. And uh, to walk us through prepping a meal for one of the, well, the largest exhibit at the aquarium, the Secret Reef exhibit here in the Ocean Journey Building is Danny Alexander. Danny is one of our senior aquarists. And uh, Danny, what is on the menu for the next feeding for the Secret Reef? And how often do we feed that exhibit? Right now, because of that pesky virus that we have, we're feeding Monday, Wednesday, and Friday uh, our largest tank, which is our Secret Reef tank. Those of y'all that have been here know that tank very well. We got our big sharks in there. We have, right now, we just have Stewie, our big green sea turtle in there, and thousands of other fish uh, in that tank. So, right now, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we feed that tank. We've already fed it this morning. We've changed our schedule because of that pesky virus once again. But I do have some of the food that we will be using on Wednesday to feed our secret reef. So I'm going to show you guys some of this. Some of it's in frozen blocks. So we're going to see if you guys can figure out what a couple of these things are in a frozen block. Let's take this block, for instance. This is something we use every time we feed that tank. It's one of our smaller foods. And it is for the smaller fish that are in that tank. So what do you guys think of that? I'll take it out. And type down, type your thoughts down the, in the comments. We'll give you about uh, 15 to 20 seconds to type what you think this might be, and then we'll see if any of you are right. Yeah. I'll try and get as close as I can so you can really appreciate <laughs> what, what this looks like. <laughs> yes, this is a favorite amongst the fish. And we really don't have to do any prep to this. We don't have to cut it because it's already small and just the right size for our small fish. All right, looks like we got a couple of guesses and they happen to be the same thing. Some people say they think it might be krill. All right, good job guys. I think I actually have some of that thought out. So let's take a look. Here is some of that thought out and you are absolutely right. We have some krill. And we have someone coming in with a, with a Kyla, Kyla, sorry, Kyla Gonzalez has, comes in with a late guess and so does Chris Seagraves of shrimp. Now, are they, are they wrong? Are shrimp and krill related? They are, yes. Shrimp are krill. All krill are shrimp, but not all shrimp are krill. <laughs> so that's very good. So krill are shrimp, they definitely are. Okay, you guys did good on that one. Ooh, we got a question before we go to the next one, Danny. Okay. Uh, and I'm glad that we're getting some questions because we love to ask them of our animal experts. In this case, Adrian Hall would like to know what animal eats the most at the aquarium? That's a hard one. What animal eats the most? That is a hard one. Now, in our biggest tank, uh, I would almost have to say our jacks, which are about two foot long, our biggest jacks are two to three foot long. They're not as big as our sharks, but believe it or not, those jacks seem to have a greater appetite than our sharks. And they actually steal our shark food almost right out of the mouths of the sharks sometimes. So I would have to say our jacks could eat the most. Uh, for its size, the jacks could eat the most. Now the sharks, if they were really hungry, they would easily be able to eat the most, say four pounds each, each time we feed them. But uh, our shark's appetite varies. It's not the same. There's times that our sharks don't even eat. When we offer them food three times a week, sometimes they don't eat. But I would say the jacks probably could eat the most. And they're a good example of uh, the, the feeding that we do that's called target feeding. Can you talk a little bit about what uh, target feeding is versus, uh, I don't know if it's called broadcast feeding or? Okay, now we have thousands of fish in there. Most of them, we can either just toss food out to them at the surface of the water, 
or we have a feeding tube system as we call it. We can load small foods into that tube system and uh, manipulate some valves, turn on a pump, and it basically flushes that food that's in the tubes down at several different places down deeper in the tank. So that's for just the general population of fish. We got a few, thing, a few fish uh, that we got to target feed though. That would be our stingrays. We have to target our stingrays because basically their mouths are on their underside and they really eat their bottom feeders for the most part. So we have to be able to get the food to their mouths. Well, when we're tossing food at the top of a 30 foot deep tank, most of that food's not gonna get to the bottom. So we have to have them trained to, to uh, come to a station as we call it come to a point where we're waiting for them and we will hand feed them there or target feed them by hand. Our sharks are the same. Our sharks would get nothing to eat if we didn't try to target and uh, try to get food directly to each one. We don't hand feed our sharks, but we do put a big fish on the end of a pole and I'll show you some of that big fish here in just a minute. We put the big fish on the end of a pole and when the sharks swim close enough to us, then we just stick it in front of them and sometimes they eat and sometimes they don't. So that's how we feed the sharks. So those are two of the species that we uh, specifically have to target feed would be our stingrays when we have cow nose and southern stingrays and our sharks which we have sandbar and sand tiger sharks. All right, Adrian Hall says, so cool, thanks for answering. But Danny, what, what is next on the menu for people to guess what, what okay. we're feeding? The other tough one that a lot of people have a hard time guessing what it is would be this one right here. So let's take it out. I'll let you look at the easy side. Now that's the easy side to tell what it is. Now that would have been the hard side there, but I'm letting you guys see it on the easy side. You should be able to make that out, what that is. So you guys let us know All what right. you think. All right, I'll give you another 15 or 20 seconds to come up with your, your guesses and type them down in the comments. And in the meantime, if you have any other questions, uh, Adrian Hall asked a good one, but if you've got any lingering uh, questions about what we feed the animals, how we feed them, you know, what it's like to work in an aquarium, Danny's been here for a very long time. I'm sure he'd be happy to answer them. So type those down in the comments too. But for the meantime, what is this? It looks delicious, doesn't it? Oh yeah, uh, it's making me hungry for a late lunch. And people do eat this one here. Uh, okay, we've got some, some very uniform answers and it seems like everybody seems to know that this is squid. Very good. Uh, maybe you guys can have some squid for lunch, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll show you one of those squid thawed out. And it really makes you hungry for squid. Oh, look at that. That's oh, a beauty. That's some mighty fine calamari there, Danny. Yes, indeed. Well, very good, you guys. Excellent answers. You guys are very observant. Good job. Now, all the other things I have are going to be easy for you guys to identify. Well, well what would eat the squid? Are there, are there, are there any Just animals? about any of the, the fish that are in that tank uh, and fish in other tanks would eat squid. If it was cut the right size, small fish, if we cut the squid small, most fish will eat it. And uh, we got some that will eat it whole. The stingrays will eat the, fish, or the squid whole and some of the fish will eat the squid whole also. All right. Well, so for those of you who are watching, if you've never been uh, on a behind the scenes tour and actually seen, uh, Danny does uh, these presentations regularly when we feed the Secret Reef. Uh, you can actually come here and you know watch as we feed the Secret Reef. You can even take part in that feeding. Uh, you might not be familiar with just how much goes into feeding the Secret Reef. And a lot of that actually is expense. This is one of the single greatest expenses that the aquarium has uh, in our budget every year. I mean, Danny, do you have any kind of rough estimates of how much it costs to feed the uh, animals at the aquarium on an annual basis? Every year we spend, I'm pretty sure, more than 200, probably close to $300,000 on different types of food. A lot of that seafood uh, for the, all the animals that are here at the Tennessee Aquarium. 
So we do take care of our animals. We spend lots of money to make sure we got healthy critters here at the Tennessee Aquarium. And uh, those of you who are watching probably see that donate button that uh, has shown up on a lot of our live streams of late. And uh, actually, if you would like to support the aquarium and directly support uh, the feeding of the animals, that is an excellent way to do that. That money is funneled directly into our emergency operations fund, and that money is earmarked 100% uh, for taking care of the animals uh, during this time when we can't have visitors in the buildings. Uh, that is an excellent way to help us kind of offset the cost of making sure that animals continue to get the same degree of care that they have always received, and this restaurant quality seafood that Danny is uh, taking the time to show us today. And I guess I should also explain uh, why we're in the Penguins Gallery. Uh, this probably does not look like a kitchen. Uh, we did say that it was going to be in the kitchen, but when we went down earlier, uh, the kitchen had no Wi-Fi, and I wasn't going to do another live stream where we had no connectivity or connectivity issues. So instead, the penguins are uh, getting some enrichment by watching us uh, talk about uh, some food. And in fact, Danny, I think you said that you have uh, some food that the penguins also would eat, even though this food is actually not specifically earmarked for them. Right. Yeah, this food is for our secret reef tank for the fish, but believe it or not, some of this the penguins actually get as part of their diet. Now their main diet would be this item right here, which is called capelin. So this fish here is called capelin. But uh, there's volunteers that come in. Well, we don't have volunteers coming in right now, but hopefully we'll get them back soon. But Lori Beth is our main penguin keeper and she was down prepping food uh, this morning, and what she was prepping was pulling out the capelin that she knew the penguins would eat. Now, why do I say it like that? Well, there's some capelin the penguins will not eat, and that would be one that looks like this. Any capelin that's bent, the penguins will not eat. Now, you guys need to let us know why won't penguins eat bent capelin? They will only eat nice straight ones like this so you guys let us know what you think why won't the penguins eat capelin that looks like this bent but they will eat capelin that looks like this very straight so you guys let us know and think about how you've seen them eat because i'm sure that you, those of you who are fans of the aquarium have probably seen them eat and think about how the mechanism for how they eat that probably has something to do with it. Yep, it does. All right, we'll give you just a few seconds. And again, keep those questions coming in. Uh, while people are typing down their questions in the comments, actually, Beth Brellenthin, uh, friend of the aquarium, former aquarium employee and uh, head of our volunteers, would like to know, <laughs> Danny, how much do you miss your chef volunteers right now? I miss, we all miss our chef volunteers very dearly. Beth? We will welcome you back as soon as we can, and hopefully it will be very soon. So you better be ready to come on back, because we got lots of seafood waiting for you to get knee deep in. Uh, Lou Everman is back with another question, which is, what are your favorite animals to feed in the aquarium? Uh, and Danny, do you have a favorite animal to feed in the aquarium? I do have a favorite animal, and Casey probably knows what it is, and that would be the octopus. Yes, I like to feed those critters. They got eight arms, and they try to get you all tied up with those eight arms. So the octopus is one of the animals that I do take care of, and I love to give those guys some food. All Thanks right. for asking. All right, so our question was, why are our penguins so picky about which capelin they eat? And you asked, why would they not eat the bent, the bent shaped capelin? Why do they prefer the straight ones? And some people have guessed. Chris Seagrave says, because they swallow it whole. Uh, Michelle McCarthy says that it swallows easier. Uh, it looks like a lot of people are saying that yeah. it's easier to swallow. Yes, very good, you guys. It's because they, uh, it's, they eat them whole. So, and they always eat them head first, so they like for the capelin to go down nice and smooth, and I would demonstrate. I was gonna say, can you demonstrate for I us? I don't think I would like capelin too much, so I don't think I will demonstrate how the penguins eat their straight capelin. But you guys are right. It's because they eat them whole, they swallow them whole, and they just like them to be straight because a crooked capelin does not go down very smooth, I am sure. Now, we've mentioned uh, that this is all restaurant quality seafood. Uh, I'm not even sure that I'm familiar or was familiar with capelin before I started working at the aquarium. Is that a food that does that work its way into seafood at all? I is have it? not tried it. 
heard that capelin is a food fish for people. I have not heard that. Smelt, the other fish that I have here close by, it is a food fish for people. I don't know whether this particular species of smelt is, but uh, mainly people around the Great Lakes, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, there's actually a festival for smelt in Wisconsin. So this is another food item that the penguins do eat. They don't get this as their main food, but they do um, get smelt also. But hey, people eat smelt too. I've never tried it, but some of my volunteers have. And one of these days, I'm gonna give it a shot. <laughs> they say you fry it whole. You can fry it whole and eat the heads and everything. Think about that, you guys. Can you guys just fry this smelt and eat them, you know, eat the whole thing? Sounds, like, and all? sounds like sardines. <laughs> yes, it is. Sounds like sardines, but you fry smelt. Huh. You fry smelt, yes. Uh, it looks like uh, my son actually got the question right. He said, Henry, age four, thinks that the capelin will get stuck like they're a hook. So I just wanted to acknowledge that so that Henry knows that I know that he is watching. <laughs> All right. So we've covered capelin, and now we've covered smelt. So let's see what else we got here, you guys. I'm going to save the hardest thing for last. So I got another easy thing for you guys to take a look at. This one's very easy. Uh, we were just eating this the other weekend, actually. Yes, all of you all should want to eat some of this. Yes. This would go great on the grill. You can boil it. Grits. You guys know what it is. So we use a lot of this, for sure. And this is a favorite amongst a lot of the fish. This is one of the favorites right here. We have our giant Japanese spider crabs. Even though the spider crabs are kind of related to this critter a little bit, spider crabs will eat this down. They eat this down, no problem whatsoever. It looks like, yes, Michelle McCarthy a lot. Everyone's getting it at shrimp. <laughs> Very good, you guys. Meanwhile, it looks like we've got, uh, I'm not sure if that's flour behind us, but flour is watching you work, Danny. <laughs> flour sees all this seafood and is uh, probably licking her chops there. Okay, well, I've got a very hard item now, you guys. If you guys get this one, you are really good. So here's the next one. Ooh, I know what this one is. That is hard. A bag of something here, y'all. All right, type your, type your answers down in the comments. See if you, uh, if you can guess what it is. And Beth, maybe, maybe you should hold off since you do know what it is. Yeah, Beth, she knows it well. I, if I had never, if I had never heard of this, I would have no clue what this is. Beth says she knows. We know you know, Beth. <laughs> uh, pull, maybe pull just one out. Give people a good look at just one. Okay. Uh, and while Danny's doing that, again, keep typing those comments down. Uh, my mom guesses, uh, is it crab? That's a good guess. We get that a lot. So not crab. But it is not crab. No. Tammy Vasquez says, I love seeing you, brother. All right. Hey, Tammy. She's in Oklahoma. Enid, Oklahoma. All right. So we got people watching from all over. That's great. Uh, a lot of people thinking uh, it might be crab. Lou Everman thinks it's crab. Jeffrey Dunton says crab or salmon. So is it salmon? Well, those are some good guesses, but you guys haven't got it yet. All right. Y'all keep thinking about it. Give you another 20 or 30 seconds. And again, keep those comments coming in. If anybody wants to donate... I would love to not have a goose egg for donations on this video. If anybody has, has the, the sense of uh, responsibility or wants to care for the, help us care for the animals, we would welcome a donation right now. But in the meantime, oh, uh, Lou Everman says abalone. That's a pretty good idea. Oh, that is. I'll give you all a clue. These, uh, the box that these come in, they say this is something tongues. So it kind of looks like a tongue but it's really not a tongue. But that's how it's shipped to us on the box. It says blank tongues. So you guys gotta fill in the blank. Oh, Beth cheated. Beth cheated and says guys, it rhymes with slam. And then two comments later, Christy Graves says clam. Okay, there we go. You guys did good. You guys came up with some great ideas, but it is clam indeed. So. 
There you go. Now you guys know what a clam looks like. And that is, is that the whole body of the clam? Oh, well, it is missing its shell. Well, I, I mean, it. minus the shell, yes, Usually obviously. I give you guys the clue that uh, it is missing its shell, but that is the majority of the clam right there, yes. Wow. But it is missing its shell. So who would be a fan of this? Is this a particular favorite of any of the Secret Reef? You know what? Most of our uh, aquatic animals aren't crazy about clam, but when we've got it mixed with all the other things that they really like, they go ahead and eat it anyway. I can't think of any specific aquatic animal that we have that this is their favorite thing. So, you know, we all have our favorite things to eat. Uh, one of my things is I'll eat almost anything, but not liver. I refuse to eat liver of any kind. I can't stand liver. So I think there might be some of our, our fish that might be the same way. It seems like our cuttlefish are not crazy about clam. So we don't really offer clam to our cuttlefish. If any of y'all know what cuttlefish are or remember what our cuttlefish look like, uh, they're not crazy about clam. They do like shrimp though. All right, well, now you know what a clam tongue looks like. If you get nothing else from this live stream, now you can tell your friends that you are familiar with clam tongues. Yes, very good, you guys. Now we got something else that's a little bit different here. We got this uh, block of something that we actually uh, get as a powder. We add hot water and we let it set up like jello. And then we can cut it in whatever size we need. Right now we just have it cut in these blocks and we will cut this even smaller when we're getting ready to feed it to the fish. But this is probably our most expensive item that we feed our aquatic animals. And we call it gel food. And the company that makes this is called Missouri, spelled different than the state Missouri, but Missouri makes all kinds of food for animals. And so they call it an aquatic herbivore gel. Now I know all you guys know what herbivores are. And if you want to, you know, let us know what an herbivore is, you can. But this is called an aquatic herbivore gel. But we have, a lot of our fish are, are carnivores and some are omnivores. Actually, probably most of them are omnivores which means they're both carnivores and herbivores, that they'll eat just about anything we throw in the water. This gel food has all kinds of good things in it though. Can you um, kind of give us an idea what the consistency looks like? Could you, can, can you bend it? You can bend it a little bit. Okay, yes. all right. Yes. So. I, I don't know what, what would be similar to this. Uh, it's just kind of soft and it's just firm enough. It's more firm than jello, so we can cut it in what, however small we want it or however large we want it, we can cut it very easily. It comes as a powder and we have to add hot water and let it set up before we uh, try to work with it. So this is gel food and it's got, oh, what's it got in it? It's got kelp, it's got algae, it's got alfalfa, spinach, soy, carrot, it's got some things in it that you guys probably like. I don't know whether you'd want to take a bite of this gel food or not. I've never done it. I think somebody has, though, on our <laughs> staff. I think somebody's tried some krill, too. I have not. I refuse. So but, you, We had some guesses coming in that were spot on. Uh, so Chris Seagrave says, so spinach but for fish. Uh, yeah. Uh, some people have guessed. Ryan uh, Ketwig says seaweed. Very good. Uh, Chris Seagrave uh, says algae. Very uh, good. Ryan Ketwig said kelp, yep. Heather Smith said tofu, and you said soy, and isn't... It's got soy in it, yeah. Okay, so, so great guesses. Yeah, you guys kind of kind of got the, the core ingredients, it wow, sounds like. you guys know it. You guys are all about it. Very good. Oh, we got a nice shout-out. Uh, Blair Wood says, Storm, River, and Arrow are here from Fentress County, Tennessee. Thank you very much for the shout-out, and thank you for joining today's stream. Thank you to all of you who are joining today's stream from our uh, impromptu kitchen uh in the penguins rock gallery again we're here because connectivity down to the actual kitchen which is in the bottom of the ocean journey building is uh not so much terrible as non-existent so that's why we were up here and now you guys have a cool cool backdrop because uh, otherwise it would just look like a commercial kitchen so i've saved the biggest for last 
the biggest thing that we feed, what do you guys think? Those of y'all that know our secret reef, it's our biggest tank. What do you think the biggest fish is going to be? I mentioned it earlier, would be our sharks. So let's see some of the things our sharks, we might offer to our sharks. All right, these are our sandbar and sand tiger sharks. We have two, we have two different species in there. Sandbar and sand tiger sharks. So here we go, guys. These Whoa. are all frozen right now. We're not going to use these until Wednesday. But uh, this is one of the biggest fish that we offer to the sharks. And believe it or not, we cannot offer, this is called a bonita, we cannot offer this to the sharks like this because it's really too big for even our sharks. Even though our sharks are six, seven foot long, they will not try to eat this bonita this big. So we actually have to whittle it down a little bit um, and get it a size that they're willing to take. So that's bonita. And uh, all the rest of the fish, other than the bonita that I have here, we can offer it whole. And I'll show you some of those other things. But we have to uh, reduce the size of the bonita a little bit before we offer it to the sharks. Ooh, Chris Seagrave says uh, a, nurse, a nurse on Bir in Birmingham, Alabama on, on her break. So, oh, wow. or actually I'm saying, I say Chris, I'm so sorry. I don't know, I can't really see your profile picture, but uh, they say they're on their break in Birmingham, Alabama. So Chris, thank you very much for your service and for being on the front lines. Yeah. Uh, during all this, we really appreciate it. Yes, indeed. Um, this is called a bluefish here. This one is the perfect size for our sharks, this bluefish. And now, is this another one you'd need to, to prepare and, um, and cut up a bit, or can they eat that one whole? What I do is I do, put, I do cut it and make it a little fleshy. So those of y'all that watch, watch uh, shark shows for Shark Week and things like that, you guys know what they do to try to attract sharks, what they put in the water. They call it chum, but what we do to try to make our fish more enticing to the sharks is we just cut notches in them and make them more fleshy. So that's how we try to get the interest of our sharks more. All right. So this is a bluefish, and uh, we actually also add vitamins to our fish for our shark. We actually have shark and stingray vitamins, believe it or not. So we give our sharks and stingrays vitamins every once in a while. <laughs> Uh, Amanda Flat says that uh, Miles, age five, is eating his lunch and says that that bonita is huge. <laughs> and they're watching from Mount Pleasant, Tennessee. So thank you for watching. And yes, that was a very big bonita. Yeah, I'm not sure if people can eat bonita. I'll have to look that one up. But that would feed a lot of people, that's for sure. That's one big fish sandwich right there. <laughs> so uh, Amanda, what is Miles eating for lunch if he's not eating bonita? Uh, what, what is on the menu for Miles today? You can type that down in the comments. All right, what's this, Danny? Uh, here's another favorite right here, a Pacific mackerel. Pacific mackerel. And it's just the right size also for our sharks. And actually, people eat mackerel too, you guys. I've seen it pickled. That's the only way I've had mackerel is pickled. So I don't know whether it's this particular species because there's more than one species of mackerel. This is a Pacific mackerel. Ooh, Renee Burns says uh, she's watching from Austin, Texas, and that she loves aquariums and that ours is on her bucket list. All right. Well, we look forward to welcoming you back whenever uh, we can announce a reopening plan. Absolutely. Okay, so here's some of the littlest. These are almost too small for our sharks, but I can get them to eat them here and there. These are called Blue Runner. And believe it or not, we actually have a lot bigger ones of these in the tank swimming around. So... Uh, these Blue Runner we got from a company though, Frozen, so we offer these Blue Runner to our sharks also. The ones we have on exhibit in the tank where the sharks are, are about five or six times this big. All right, looks like uh, Miles is having a turkey and goat cheese sandwich on a roll with organic white cheetahs. That sounds more delicious than, uh, than Blue Runners and mackerel to me. Yes, it does. Uh, and we, you know, so you mentioned blue runners being a fish that you can actually see in the tank. And a frequent question we get, actually, specifically because we have sharks, is how do you keep the sharks from eating the other fish? And actually, you're, you're kind of looking at it, right? Yes. I mean, this is how we do it. Yes. Offering our sharks 
three times a week, we offer our sharks some of this stuff here. So this takes the edge off their appetite. So do they eat one of their tank mates sometimes? Yes. I've never seen it in the 20, well, this building's been open since 2005. So in the 15 years this building's been open, I have never seen it. Have others seen it? Yes. Other staff members have, other volunteers have. And Beth, if you're still watching, I know you have. Surely you've seen a shark eat one of their tank mates, but I have never seen it. So it does happen every once in a while, but it's rare. All right, uh, Amber McIntyre says, uh, my daughter Kaylee said she loves to watch the divers do the shark show and she loves the otters. We come every week. Well, we can't wait for you and your daughter to be able to come back and see those uh, dive shows and all those other things that you miss so much and uh, obviously yes. we miss you as well yes we do it's lonely without our guests here we got to get you guys back here soon hopefully we will all right well danny what else is uh do we have anything else left to show oh, well actually i do beth says i've seen it so now we have confirmation <laughs> that beth is has caught a shark nibbling on a tank mate at some point oh okay so do our critters like uh, a little salad? Well, yes they do. So this is a regular thing that we also put in the tank. Uh, we actually put this in the tank every day. We give them broccoli and romaine lettuce. So a lot of our fish, I mean, we can't have, we don't have kelp available. So broccoli and romaine lettuce kind of serve as our kelp, as our form of kelp. We can easily get broccoli and romaine lettuce. It's a favorite of Stewie, our big sea turtle. And a lot of y'all know about Stewie, our big sea turtle. And we still have Oscar too. He's just, um, he's off site right now in rehab. He's recovering from a buoyancy issue that he's had for some time. And hopefully we'll get Oscar back soon. But the broccoli and the romaine lettuce, certainly a favorite among the green sea turtles. And a lot of the fish nibble on this also. Well, and again, those of you who've been uh, fortunate enough to come and take a behind the scenes tour, uh, if you then you probably have met Danny before, but uh, you've also taken part in feeding the sea turtles uh, by throwing out some leaves of uh, oh, lettuce, yes, right? Yes, yes, throwing leaves of romaine out. Yes, that's what we uh, do let the backstage pass, throw leaves of romaine out for our sea turtles. And so we will get back doing that once again, hopefully soon, you guys, and you can help us with that. And we, so we talked about the pneumatic tubes that we used uh, to send out, uh, like the krill. Yes, this is an example of uh, the small food. There's all kinds of cut up things in here mixed with the krill. This is what we call our smaller cut food, that's krill size. And we've cut up other things to the size of krill, and we will load this in that tube system that I mentioned earlier. And we put caps on after we load it into the tubes, put caps on like loading a cannon, and then we turn on a pump, and it flushes that food out down deeper into the tank. So this is some of that small cut food right here. I stole some of it from this morning to show you guys. I'll have to go throw it in here in a minute because I think some of the fish were complaining. I cheated them <laughs> out of a little bit of food. So we'll probably, uh, I would keep, keep watching the Aquarium's Facebook page because I'm pretty certain we're gonna actually film uh, a live feeding uh, for you to actually see the pneumatic tube system that Danny's talking about because it is, it is really cool. Uh, and this vegetation, so this, these vegetables and salad that Danny is talking about, those are delivered a little bit differently, aren't they? Yeah, we have these special things that we have made out of, uh, uh, it's like a plastic piping. It's actually big types of plumbing that we've cut little sections and we have modified it so that we can stick the romaine into it where it's sticking out and then we can stick the broccoli in it and it'll be sticking up like this when we drop it in the water. We have those, uh, those tubes that, um, that we have modified and stick the broccoli and the romaine in those tubes and special gaps that we cut into it. And then we have that thing tied to a rope and we just drop it down in the water on the end of a rope and the fish and the turtles even some of our stingrays, I don't know why the stingrays are going for the salad, but stingrays aren't really known to go for salad. 
but there's a couple of stingrays that like to cover this and keep all the others from getting it. But then Stewie or Oscar, they'll come and they'll run the stingrays off and they'll eat on it a little bit. And then the fish will have their opportunity also. So they all kind of take turns and they're eating their romaine and broccoli. So we do drop this in the water every day, 365 days a year. We're dropping on uh, broccoli and romaine lettuce. That's a lot of salad. Oh yeah, lots of salad. Uh, so Beth is back uh, with a question. She says, have the appetites changed in the Secret Reef since we've been closed? Well, since we've gone from five days a week of feeding the Secret Reef to three days a week, I've noticed the jack's appetite definitely is intense. Uh, yesterday, a jack, when I was trying to feed the sharks, or actually, was that this morning? Yeah, that was actually this morning. So when I was trying to feed the sharks, the jacks are much more aggressive at stealing the food. I, I thought I had it right in the shark's mouth and a jack swooped in and stole it off my pole right before the shark could get it. So yes, the jacks have gotten a lot more aggressive. I haven't noticed it so much with the others though. Well, and someone was asking earlier, and I forgot, I neglected to see who asked the question, but what is a jack? I guess they tuned in a little bit late. So can you tell us, kind of show us how, how big they are with your arms? I don't know if your arms will stretch that wide. A lot of people think they look like a big tuna. Oops. They think they look that a jack looks like a big tuna. And it's about three foot long. And if, if we had set up over in front of one of the windows from our secret reef, we could probably could have pointed one out to y'all. But um, they're about three foot long, and they look kind of mean. It's a mean looking fish. They don't look like they're happy at all. So, and they're one of the most aggressive fish as far as feeding goes that we have. They're just stealing food all the time from us when we're trying to get food to the shark. So we have to be very uh, uh, witty to try to out clever them because they like, like hanging around, just waiting for us to stick our pole in the water. So we have to hold the fish out of the water on the end of the pole until the shark gets close enough and try to get it directly to the shark. So that's how cunning those jacks are. So there's a skill to it for sure then. Oh yes. All right, well Danny, it looks like uh, we have both run out of food and run out of questions. So conveniently those two things have happened uh, simultaneously. But uh, to those of you who have joined us today, thank you so, so much for tuning in and for asking such great questions and for being really clever uh, guessers when it comes to identifying just exactly what foods we are feeding our animals today and every day, whether we're open or closed. Uh, and for those of you who, who enjoyed today's stream, we do have an archive of past streams available on our website, tnaqua.org, in our Aquarium at Home section. That section also includes activity sheets you can print off in case you're at home with some kids and need some ways to keep them occupied and thinking about things, thinking about science, thinking about the world in maybe a different way. We have our weekday wonders activity sheets or activity sets, uh, and those have been created by our education department and include ways that you can get your kids outside doing things like nature journaling, uh, even some animal themed yoga poses to get them active and, and again, outside away from screens and, and out in the yard and doing science uh, in their world, however large that world has been shrunken to. So thank you all very much one more time. Thank you, Danny, for taking the time to walk us through the menu here in the uh, impromptu kitchen and penguins rock. And uh, yeah, we will uh, see you guys next time. We'll have another live stream for you tomorrow at about 1 p.m. And if you look at the Aquarium's Facebook page at about 11 a.m., you should get some sort of notification about what that topic will be and where we, where we will be. But for the time being, thank you all once again, and we're gonna go ahead and end the stream right here. We'll see you next time.